Could you imagine being targeted, abused, or even killed simply because of your gender? That is the horrifying truth of femicide, the deliberate killing of women and girls because of their gender. It's a grim reality that unfolds daily in homes, streets, and communities across the world. Femicide is not just a word, it's a deadly manifestation of deep-seated gender inequality and disrespect for female life. Take the tragic case of socialite starlet Wahoo Mwangi. She was just 26 years old, full of life and promise, when her body was found in an Airbnb in Nairobi. The signs of strangulation and a deep cut on her leg told a tale of brutal violence, of a life abruptly and cruelly cut short. Each detail from the crime scene, the bloodied clothes, the discarded knife, underscores the chilling reality of femicide. But what drives such horrific acts? The motivations are complex and multifaceted, but at their core, they stem from a toxic mix of misogyny and sexism. Femicide is often a fatal endpoint of a spectrum of gender-based violence, a tragic manifestation of the belief that women are inferior, subordinate, or even disposable. Then there's intimate partner violence. It's a grim fact that many victims of femicide are killed by those they know and trust. Their partners, ex-participants, or family members Domestic disputes turning deadly, love mutating into possession, control, and ultimately violence. From honor killings where women are murdered to preserve family honor, to the horrific crimes committed by cults and serial killers, femicide takes many forms. Each one is a stark reminder of the vulnerability of women and girls in societies where gender inequality is pervasive. Starlet Wahoo's life was brutally cut short, a victim of a heinous act that highlights the grim reality of femicide. The name may change, the location may differ, but the story remains the same. It's a tale of gender-based violence, a tale of femicide, and it's a tale that must change. Femicide does not discriminate. It takes on many forms and strikes in many places. Take, for instance, the dreadful case of Paul Magara Marara. Known as a suspected serial killer, Marara has been terrorizing residents, leaving a trail of fear and despair. His dark obsession with murder, linked to his involvement in a cult, has led to the deaths of at least three women and injuries to four others. His modus operandi? Attacking women under the cloak of night, stealing their panties as trophies of his heinous acts? Then, there's the chilling story of Christine Orma. One ordinary evening, while preparing a meal in her home, she was brutally beheaded. The mystery surrounding her murder is still unsolved, leaving her family and community in a state of shock and mourning. Her life was abruptly taken away, in the very place she should have felt most safe. Her home. Femicide can also rear its ugly head in the form of domestic disputes, escalating to fatal consequences. Grace Wangari and Mercy Atieno, both victims of suspected domestic fights, are stark examples of this. Wangari died in hospital after a violent altercation with her boyfriend. Atieno, on the other hand, was stabbed to death by her own husband. Their lives abruptly ended, their voices forever silenced. These stories are chilling reminders of the many faces of femicide. From the shadowy streets where a serial killer lurks, to the supposed safety of one's own home, femicide can strike anywhere, anytime. It is a grim reality that continues to plague societies across the globe, taking away precious lives and leaving a trail of devastation in its wake. Opening, the impact of femicide extends far beyond the victims themselves. Femicide, this monstrous act, doesn't just rob a woman or a girl of her life. Its ripples of devastation extend outwards, touching every life that the victim was a part of. When a woman is killed because of her gender, it leaves families shattered. Mothers and fathers lose daughters, children lose mothers, and siblings lose sisters. The pain of such a loss is unimaginable, a void that can never be filled. But the impact of femicide doesn't stop at the family's doorstep. It continues on, seeping into the community. Neighbors, friends, colleagues. People who knew the victim are left traumatized, haunted by the brutality of the act and the stark reminder of the danger that women face every day. Communities are left in fear, their sense of safety and security brutally undermined. The repercussions of femicide, however, do not confine themselves to the local surroundings. They ripple out even further, reaching the very fabric of societies. Societies are left grappling with the loss of valuable lives, the erosion of human rights and the stark reminder of the deep-seated gender inequalities that continue to persist. It underscores the grim reality that women, regardless of their location, age or status, 
continue to be viewed as disposable, subordinate, or inferior. Femicide is not an issue that can be confined within geographical boundaries. It is a global issue, a horrifying testament to the universal prevalence of gender-based violence and discrimination. From Nairobi to New York, from Berlin to Beijing, no corner of the globe is immune to this horrifying crime. Every femicide is a stark reminder of the urgent need for action, for measures that address not just the act, but the very root causes that fuel such violence. Closing. Femicide is a global issue that demands urgent action. How can justice be served for victims of femicide? This question echoes in the hearts of many, seeking answers in the face of harrowing grief and loss. Let's take the trial of Jacqueline Marib and Joseph Irungu for the murder of Monica Kimani as an instance. Here, the pursuit of justice was relentless. The prosecution presented 35 witnesses and documentary evidence to establish their case. Irungu was accused of being the principal offender, while Maribé was accused of being an accomplice. This process, albeit painful, was crucial in shedding light on the grim reality of femicide. But justice is not just about punishment for the guilty. It's about ensuring a system that prevents such heinous acts from taking place. It's about implementing legal reforms that protect women and girls, making sure they are safe in their homes, workplaces and communities. Law enforcement plays a pivotal role in this process. It starts from the moment an incident is reported. It's about conducting thorough investigations, collecting evidence and ensuring the perpetrators are brought to justice. It's about making sure every piece of evidence is considered, every lead is followed, every possibility is explored. However, justice doesn't stop at law enforcement. It extends to our courts, where judges and juries must be educated about the complexities of femicide. It's about ensuring fair trials, where victims are treated with respect and dignity, not blamed or shamed. Justice is also about the aftermath. It's about providing support to the families left behind. It's about helping them navigate their grief, offering psychological support and ensuring they are not left to bear the burden of loss alone. In the end, justice for victims of femicide is about more than just retribution. It's about societal transformation. It's about challenging and changing the deeply entrenched gender inequalities that fuel such violence. It's about creating a world where every woman and girl can live without fear of violence, a world where femicide is a thing of the past. Justice for the victims is a crucial step in combating femicide, and we all have a role to play in ensuring this justice is served. How can we as a society take action against femicide? This question is not just for lawmakers and police officers, it's for every single one of us. We each have a role to play in combating this horrifying act of violence. Taking action against femicide requires a multi-pronged approach. It's not enough to merely condemn these acts, we must actively seek to prevent them. This starts with raising awareness about femicide and gender-based violence. Understanding is the first step towards change. Educate yourself about the realities of femicide, its root causes and its devastating impacts. Then share this knowledge with others. Talk about it with your friends, family, colleagues and social media followers. Break the silence surrounding this issue. Prevention programs are also crucial. Schools, workplaces and communities must implement programs that teach respect, equality and non-violence. Encourage your local institutions to adopt such programs. If they don't exist, advocate for their creation. Supporting survivors and families affected by femicide is another important aspect of taking action. Many organizations offer resources and services to these individuals from counseling and legal aid to financial support and safe housing. Consider donating to these organizations or volunteering your time and skills. Lastly, we must address the root causes of gender inequality and violence. This means challenging the harmful gender norms and stereotypes that perpetuate violence against women. It means advocating for legal reforms that protect women's rights and hold perpetrators accountable. It means creating a culture where every woman and girl is valued, respected and safe. We all have a role to play in combating femicide. Educate yourself and others about this issue and support organizations working tirelessly to end gender-based violence.